Hi, we're here on location at the Casa Del Mar Hotel in Santa Monica, California, and we're waiting on the great director of sports films such as Bull Durham and White Men Can Jump and Tin Cup, Ron Shelton. He'll be with us shortly. Hi, I'm here with the greatest sports filmmaker in the history of motion pictures. With credits such as the critically acclaimed and cult classic Bull Durham, White Men Can Jump, and Cobb, Ron Shelton, welcome to the show. What about Tim Cobb? And Tim Cobb. There you go. The greatest golf movie since Thank you. Caddyshack. And arguably the only golf movie ever made. <laughs> I, mean, I know you spent five years with the Baltimore Orioles farm system. You made it to AAA. How does it feel to have been a professional athlete and, and then a director doing sports films? Well, that was a long time ago, Stumpy, to quote uh, a line of Tommy Lee Jones and Cobb. Um, I, you know, I think sports just prepares you for, uh, for almost anything because the sports is basically learning to live with failure and the ups and downs and getting your ass handed to you every day. So, you know, if, if you do that for a living, uh, I think you could, uh, you can kind of do anything. And, uh, but my love was always storytelling and movies and writing. So mm -hmm. in that regard, uh, it was a natural evolution. And when you were playing uh, baseball, and you were, I guess when you made that decision that, okay, it's time to hang it up and do something else, what, what was the motivating factor behind that? Well, I, you know, I didn't really make the decision to, to quit in the sense that it was made for me. There was a strike of 1972. Okay. And I was in AAA, and I'd been in AAA for a year and a half, and uh, uh, I wasn't going anywhere in the Oriole organization, and there was no spring training, and many people thought the season would, would be canceled. So um, I decided it was time to, I mean, it was, I couldn't sit it out anymore. I mean, mm -hmm. minor league players don't make enough money to get through the winter. So, right. uh, so I went back to school. Okay. Well, now for, my, for all our audience, and they want to know, Ron Shelton, who's huge in sports? Well, we're living in the age of Michelangelo, and his name is Eldrick Tiger Woods. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> for those of of you and us who wonder, what was it like to see Ty Cobb or Babe Ruth play? Well, this is what it is. It's Tiger Woods. I mean, he, he simply dominates a sport where, which has never been more popular among young athletes. There's more good golfers than there's ever been. It's an international sport, and he plays at a different level, not just physically, but mentally. And, uh, you know, he's the smartest player. He's the toughest player. He's the most prepared player. Mm -hmm. He. Um, He's the most clutch player. I mean, he's so good that when he doesn't win, it's news. He's so good that when he's out of it, the TV keeps cutting away to him. Right. He's so good when you're in the pro shop after a round of golf and you didn't watch the tournament. Everybody says, "How does Tiger? How did Tiger do?" And that's how good he is. And 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 you know, your two-year-old crawling around on the floor recognizes it. That's Tiger. Right. So uh, we, you know, he, he is a genius in his sport. And he is still so young and really still in the prime of his career. I mean, do you think that he has anything left to prove? Well, he has a lot left to prove to himself. He wants to beat mm -hmm. Jack Nicholson's record, okay. and, and uh, he needs four more majors to tie it. So he is the Ty Cobb, but he still <coughs> has work to do to be in the um, consideration of the Jack Nicholas and, and players like that. No, he's already in that league, obviously. Okay. I mean, I think right now, if his career ended through some injury or something, they'd say Jack Nichols and Tiger Woods okay. are the two greatest. Mm -hmm. The records prove it, but he would like to be, have it be Tiger Woods as number one and, okay. uh, and, and Jack is number two. But, you know, I, I mean, he has, Jack just beat the heck out of you and ground it out. Mm -hmm. I mean, Tiger has a certain kind of movie star flair that, you know, Palmer had. Mm -hmm. you know, only very few golfers have had. Right. Well, he sure is capitalizing on the today's world of social media and endorsements and, and, and really living up to it. I mean, he seems like a gentleman of the game and certainly someone that um, responds well under pressure and in, remains quite composed and tactful. Well, he, yeah, he, he was, uh, the possibility of Tiger Woods was invented by another huge sports figure, obviously Michael Jordan, who was the first man ever to, to really understand, uh, I mean, with some help of David Falk and others, that he was a giant business and corporation under himself. Now, all these years after Michael Jordan's final retirement, he is the second highest paid athlete in sports today. Mm. Are you aware of that? Michael Jordan makes $45 million a year now. Still, right. And wow. uh, um, I'm just, in fact, finishing a, a documentary for ESPN about 
on this 3030 series. And Excellent. I chose the subject, Jordan rides the bus, which is his year playing baseball in Birmingham. Oh. But it <clears throat> made me really appreciate, again, what how he had reinvented what an athlete could oh. do. Ron, what's on your iPod right now? Or what's the, what I, don't have an, like? I don't have an iPod. OK. <laughs> um, I haven't got one yet. Uh, I'm still in the 19th century. Uh, mostly because I haven't had time to uh, figure out how to get my thousand albums onto it. Mm -hmm. And and it's really hard for me to read that little thing. So, right. um, <laughs> and I also like the liner notes. So I'm really a Luddite in this regard. But this is, it will be, my next purchase will be an iPod. What music do I listen to, you're asking? Yes, what do you like? What's the person that comes to your head? On vinyl? Well, I mean, I listen to the classics, uh, you know, um, I grew up in the, as a jazz fan. My dad was a jazz musician, and uh, so I didn't really listen to rock and roll in the '60s. Yeah. I was listening to, you know, to the great jazz musicians, or Miles and, Davis, or well, Stan Getz, yeah, and Duke Ellington, uh -huh. and uh, the great singer Sarah Vaughan, and, and Dinah Washington. I, I probably these days I'm listening to Dinah Washington more than anybody. Okay. But I always am listening to Sinatra, and I'm always listening to Ellington, and, and the great pianist from Art Tatum to. Uh, on so I, I kind of um, you know I don't fit into the uh, to, to, to the to the big sale kiosk at, right. uh, uh, at the record stores. I still am looking for record stores. They don't exist. I hate to find music online. So I'm really from another era in that regard. Right. Well, and there's hopefully more music to be picked for your films because I believe you're you're working on some things right now. And I understand another sports film, and I'm sure your fans will be happy to hear about that. Well, I, I believe we're very close to going to Mexico. I just got back from Mexico to shoot my first baseball movie since Bull Durham. It's called Our Lady of the Ballpark. And um, God willing, we'll be shooting it in the spring. It's about a pitcher for the Yankees who ends up in the Mexican League. And uh, with all the wonderful cultural conflicts mm -hmm. and blessings that, uh, uh, that go with that endeavor. And um, I have a golf movie called Q School. OK. Um, I have a, uh, I just uh, have a series that we just sold to cable television about the golden age of auto racing in the 50s and 60s, and wow. the kids from Santa Monica, Phil Hill and Phil Shelby who moved here, and Dan Gurney and Richard Ginther and all those guys who were basically hot rodders who went over and took on the best okay. uh, uh, European drivers in, the, in Le Mans and Formula One, and um, there's always a few other things like the Game of Shadows we've developed, the, the book about steroids. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I, I've been a little busy, but uh, hopefully the baseball in Mexico will be the next one. Well, that sounds exciting. I'm really happy to hear you've got a lot on your plate and going full force. You know, I really appreciate you being here and participating in the show. I have to say that you have really been a great friend to me and a mentor, and I feel grateful to have worked with you on two of your films, Dark Blue and Hollywood Homicide. And uh, those were great experiences for me. And I, I thank you so much, Ron, for being on the show. Well, uh, I'm just happy to be here and hope I can help the ball club. <laughs> you absolutely are. Thank you. And I'm Greg Mark Miller for Who's Huge in Sports.